Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Sabitzer has signed for Manchester United late in this January transfer window and Manchester United have not only got a deal done, they've got a fantastic deal done. I think that Sabitzer would have been a player that I would have took on the first day of the January transfer window without a shadow of a doubt. To do it in the final hours is, um, is encouraging. It's encouraging and I think it yet again shows the... Um, I mean, I would put this down to Ten Hag, really. Um, where we were this morning, it wasn't looking great, but he has been persistent publicly talking about the need to bring players in and to be able to pull a player out like, like Sabitza in the final few hours of the transfer window is impressive. Now, what we're hearing is that United were approaching a lot of people. Tillemans was talked about. Um, uh, Awar's still being spoken about. Uh, Gravenberg was mentioned, but Bayern Munich didn't want to do a deal. But as we've been saying throughout this transfer window, you can do good deals in the January transfer window, especially with the power of the Premier League and the money that's in it. Clubs will do deals to save themselves money, to look to the sum of themselves. Deals could be done. What was preventing Manchester United from doing deals was the Glazers and this sale and this stupid approach to not doing stuff that has, you know, has created this scenario where Christian Eriksen gets injured and they have to do something, which they should have been doing in the first place. Um, and I think that that that's the only um, concern is that we should have been bringing Sabitzer in anyway. If even if Eriksen was fit we should have been looking at bringing in Sabitza. So the Sabitza deal is done. Here we go from Fabrizio Romano. It's a loan deal. There's no loan to buy. There's no loan obligation to buy. Bit of a conflicting story there. Some people are saying that United didn't want to do a, lo a loan to buy. Some people are saying Bayern Munich didn't want a loan to buy. Some people say United don't want to do it because they want to keep their options open for midfielders in the summer. Some people say Bayern don't want to do it because they want to keep Sabitza. To be honest with you, this is about as good as we could hope for. Um, I don't really care what happens in the summer because we don't know who our owners are going to be in the summer. We need a player to get us through to the end of the season. For once, we're living in the now. You know, I was joking today about Samuel Luckhurst. All his updates today seem to be about United want this player in the summer. United want that player in the summer. I don't care about the summer. In the summer, it, top four, Carabao Cup, Europa League, FA Cup won't matter anymore. In the summer, we might have different owners. I don't care about the summer. I care about living in the moment. And finally, finally, United have listened to Ten Hag and they've lived in the moment. And now we've brought a player in that gives us a chance. Because I think if we don't bring anybody in with the injury to Ericsson, we've got no chance. And Sabitza gives us a chance. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I was thinking about it this afternoon, just talking about Sabitza. Uh, it was amazing how many people were on social media saying, is it a good deal? What do you think? And then... The majority of people who know what he's all about are like, what are you talking about? This deal is a is a really good deal. Like, you know, you see Jorginho going to Arsenal. You've seen Mudrik and Jao Felix going to Chelsea. Sabitzer is a good signing. It's a switched on signing. It may not be as sensational as a big name as some of the other people, but a footballing level, it's a very, very good signing. You know, a lot of these people who you know, delve into their little TikTok videos and that, they'll be loving it because he is a good player and he was a good player at Leipzig and he's still a good player now. And basically, Ten Hag has one hell of a poker face as Joshua Bowater. I sensed, I, I to be honest though, in the press conference this morning, I sensed happiness in Ten Hag at the start and I wish I'd said it in the re reaction and now I know why. But if you wanted to replace Ericsson, you couldn't really get for, for free on a loan deal, I'm, I would argue that I don't think you could find anybody on a loan deal as well suited to replacing Ericsson than Sabitzer. Sabitzer is not Ericsson, and I, I, I'm not even going to get into the debate about who's the better player because that's irrelevant, but he is basically, he, has, he can basically do everything Ericsson can do, but he's quite good at carrying the ball, dribbling, and he's a much more tenacious presser and tackler. So... Some of Ericsson's weaknesses, he doesn't have. I'm not saying he's better than Ericsson because Ericsson is fantastic at knitting the team's defence with the midfield. Sabitz has got a good shot on him as well. But he is more tenacious. He is more of a tackler. He is more of a presser. He's got a lovely set-piece delivery on him as well. So, but, but, he never played in the Premier League. Never played in the Premier League. Uh, he's done it in the Champions League. He's done it, he's done it in the Bundesliga. And as we know... Bundesliga to Premier League doesn't have a rich history so there's always that risk but on paper and if it was not played on paper it's played on grass or synthetic grass he is a very very good replacement and it fits in with what I've been saying for quite a while now 
Ten Hag is a big, big fan of the Bundesliga and he will bring a player in there at some point. And, and, and you know what? It's a Ralph Rangnick type signing as well. Mark, is it right? This guy can play different positions as well, says Leo J. And will you do a video on Sabitzer against another midfielder, says Darren? Yeah, we will probably do that um, at some point, yeah. But um, where does he play? Well, I did a tweet a few years ago and I got ridiculed for it because I said he can play CDM. And I think he can. I, I really do think he can play that role. But um, I think he's an eight. I think that's what he is. I think he's an eight. He can play off the wide. He can play as a 10. I think he could do a job as a six. But for me, I think he's an eight. I think he replaces Ericsson. I think he plays next to Casemiro. That's where I think he is. And um, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. And also what I would say about United is yet again, yet again, it just shows you what United can do when they can be asked. Like all this window, it's been embarrassing. We get to the last few hours and oh, Sabitz is here. The same thing happened last year in the January in the summer transfer window. An embarrassing summer chasing Frankie de Jong and Rabio, and then in the final two weeks, oh, 150 million. Let's get Anthony and Casemiro, and it's it's so frustrating. And it just shows you we have got the pull, and we can bring good players in, Casemiro, Anthony, and Sabitza. But the theme is desperately doing it late in a window. Imagine what we could do if we just were treated like a football club because we can bring quality in. Ten Hag's aware of it. You know, uh, this has got Ten Hag's footprint all over it, Sabitzer. Bundesliga, player that likes to play in the press, you know, good on the ball. It's just a quintessential Ten Hag signing. Um, and you can guarantee, I mean, he's got good connections with Bayern Munich as well. You can guarantee that, this, that Ten Hag has been a big factor in this. Um, and, it's, you know, we, we, we can bring good players in, but the, the appetite of the club is too slow. Um, but look, on a positive level, this gives me hope. This gives me encouragement because I think he's a really good player. And I didn't think this morning, when, from what we were hearing, or even at lunchtime, I was like, God knows what you can do in the last few hours of the transfer window. And we've heard a lot of stories about a lot of players that United have approached. And I think they basically just blasted Europe and everywhere and went, look, we're looking for somebody. And unfortunately, we've been able to get the Ten Hag deal. Uh, the um, Sabitzer deal. A product of the Red Bull scouting system. If he's a Rangnick type of player, he's a United type of player. What a great run of games to integrate him into the team, says Charlie. And Sabitzer is a central midfielder. Eriksen is an attacking midfielder. So I think he's actually better than Eriksen for the Eric wants him from that role, Nathan. Look, I, I, I imagine Christian Eriksen feels pretty shit tonight. He, he won't be playing in a in a cup final. He, he won't be playing against Barcelona. Um, he's gone from a first team essential player to you know looking at out from the you know looking out outside and you know what no, no matter how big a professional Ericsson is he will be hurt by this because he can't play and we've gone and got a replacement for him so I don't want to offend Christian Ericsson because I think he's a really important player for us but if Sabitza works and he's he's got to take his form from the Bundesliga to the Premier League if it works I feel he offers more well, I think he offers more than Ericsson because Ericsson doesn't, statistically, Ericsson doesn't tackle much and he's not very physical. Sabitza will. So that support, you know, if you're going away to Anfield like we are in March and you're playing Sabitza and Casemiro, I think that works. I think you can defensively work as a pair. I, don't, I never really felt that Ericsson and Casemiro would work in those circumstances and you would need Fred. Um, he's a really exciting player. Look, I, you know... I, I've got to say, ever since we were linked to him and ever since it became a reality that we were going to get him, I've been very happy with it. And, you know, people say, oh, you're negative. I'll be negative if I think there's a reason to be negative, but I'll be honestly positive if, if I think there is a reason. And I, I like this player. Um, I remember when he was at Leipzig and we knew he was going to leave Bayern and we were sort of tentatively linked to him and I really liked the idea of that. Um, I really like the idea of this. I think it's... Um, I, I just think it, he is exactly about as good as it gets in the last few hours of a transfer window on a loan deal. Uh, I really hope Ten Hag has asked the uh, medical department to put up a substantial injury uh, to Ericsson and after a month Ericsson is back, says uh, Kisley. Okay. Um, and yeah, look, I think he would be... Uh, so basically, he's flying into Manchester. He may well be in Manchester now. Um, the terms of the agreement have been done with Bayern Munich. The personal terms have been done with the player. So really, we're, we're just waiting for Manchester United to officially announce it. And I presume there will be a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, medical work and stuff like that. 
Um, and then obviously he wouldn't be playing tomorrow, but he would be into the match day squad for the game on Saturday afternoon against Crystal Palace. And uh, yeah, he wouldn't be ready to start tomorrow, Ladios, because he wouldn't be registered in time, but he would be straight into the uh, squad for that. A few people talking about Awa. I'm not talking about Awa. I'm doing a, um, I'm doing a reaction to assigning um, um, Sabitza. We are live again at eight o'clock. We will talk about the final hours of the transfer window then, but this is a reaction to Sabitza, so I've got no interest in talking about other signings at the moment because this is just going to be a short reaction to Sabitza and then we're back at eight o'clock. Um, please do subscribe, by the way. Make sure you smash a like on the video. Sabitza is Fred and Eric Erickson together, says Jack. Um, look, th th there'll be a lot of people pontificating about what Sabitza is. Some people will compare him to Fred with different attributes. Some people compare him to Ericsson with different attributes. I wouldn't say he's a combination of Fred and Ericsson. I don't think that at all. I think he's um, he's he's got a ridiculously good passing range over long and short distance. He's got a, a really good set piece. He's got a really good shot on him. He's really good in the press. Um, he likes to put a tackle in. Um, he's pretty good with the ball at his feet. If there's space, he'll run into it. You know, that's not really what Ericsson's about either. Um, yeah, I, I think he. I think he's a player in his own right. And the biggest, the biggest problem we'll have with Sabitzer is whether he can take what he's done in the Bundesliga into the Premier League. And and he should be able to because the teams that he's played for are very high energy teams. And and in the Premier League, that's what you need. You look at some of the players that have failed in the Premier League uh, from the Bundesliga, and it tends to be flair players. You know, has Havertz really been a super success? He's done okay. We had Kagawa. We've got Sancho, although I don't put Sancho in that category, if I'm honest. Mkhitaryan, there's been a few others at other clubs. But I think Sabitza isn't really a flair player. He's um, he's a midfielder um, and he's a very busy midfielder. And he's a very uh, athletic, aggressive, energetic midfielder with you know very, 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 very good technical skills. So there might be a bit of an adaptment. Um, but ultimately, we need him to hit the ground running because he's a loan deal. And um, we've got a lot of games. So, um, I, you know what? You can never predict, but I've got a good feeling about this. I have. Eric Ten Hag knows what he's doing, so I think it will work, says Tumbleweed. Uh, I really like Spitzer. I wanted him when we left. he left Leipzig, says Sean Turner. Um, I think they're not doing the buy option is the right thing. New owners coming in, hopefully go for a higher profile player. It's a perfect loan. Um, Arjun says, I think we accidentally stumbled upon the perfect player for the role. Fresh legs and gives a rotation option for Bruno later on when Ericsson is back. Yeah, he can cover a couple of roles. Yeah, definitely. Flight can easily be tracked online. Scheduled to land at Manchester Airport at 7.41. So in about half an hour. Thank you very much for that, Ben. And I'd be excited if we signed to Bitsa permanently in the summer, says James. We'd still need another top midfielder and then we can send Scooby-Doo on his way. Um, also, uh, Sabitza and Veghorst will add physicality kind of players. We probably needed, to be fair. Our flair elements are sorted, says Nick P. And could you maybe pronounce the S in Sabitza more dominantly, like Sabitza maybe? That's how he's pronounced back in Australia. Just a bit pet peeve of mine, says Moritz. I'll try that one. And Sabitza reminds me of Frankie de Jong signing that Eric Ten Hag wanted. Can play multiple positions and carry the ball when needed, says Vacation. I think that's something that... I will not have the comparison with Ericsson or Fred because Sabitza will carry the ball. He he will dribble the ball. He will run, you know, he will carry it into space. Um, Warrior, thank you very much and welcome to the members club. But you know what? We, we, we will see. We will see what happens. Um, I live in the... I think the most important thing about United season now is that we live in the moment. I don't really give a shit about what we're going to do in the summer. In fact, it frustrates me, as you probably picked up. I don't care about Harry Kane, Osman. I don't know why... We've had a load of stories today from journalists close to United about what we're going to do in the summer, what Richard Arnold wants to do in the summer. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Are we, are we up for sale or what? We're up for sale. So why are we talking about the summer? Let's talk about the now. In the grand scheme of things, Veghorst and Sabitza probably isn't enough. But in the last few hours of the transfer window, Veghorst on his own wasn't enough. So to be able to bring somebody in like Sabitza, especially in light of the Ericsson injury, I still don't think it makes us as comfortable as we would like to be, but it had to be done and it gives us a chance. Uh, your take on the team of the season was criminal. May the FA ban you, says Nelly. Thanks for that. Not interested. And uh, Christian, thank you very much for gifting five memberships. Um, good signing, says Ethan. Thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, well, I didn't do the signing, but, uh, you know, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, I'm just having a quick check here. Somebody just said just, there's something coming in about Sabitza. So let's just have a quick look at what this is. Um, uh, 
Um, there is, um, I mean, look, this is for the eight o'clock show. I'm not going to, I don't want to delve into what's going on in the last few windows because this is a reaction to a signing Sabitzer. Um, but there are a few stories going around that Manchester United might bring somebody else in. Now, if we've suddenly decided to do two deals in the last few hours of the window, um, then, you know, I'm very, 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 very encouraged by that, of course. But there will be cynics out there who say, why, why are we doing business like that so late in the window? Um, to which the answer to the question is, I don't know. Maybe it's cheaper to do it on the last day. I know United in the past have done that. They have done business in, at the end of the window late on purposely because it saves them money. Um, I don't know. United's transfer activity is, is very, very difficult to uh, to read because I just don't know. I don't know what, what the plan is in many ways. But I think that there is reason to be excitement here. Um, I personally think it's a really good signing for United and one that I'm looking forward to see um, play for Manchester United and one that I think United have, have got right. So I'm very, very pleased with it. Um, I can't I can't argue with that. Um I wish we'd done it a little bit sooner, but I think the you know in the cold light of day, it's probably the Ericsson injury that's prompted this. Um, but it gives us options. It gives us a chance, and I think that's the thing. I, I feel a lot more positive now than I did a few hours ago about our chances of getting top four and winning trophies. A plus with Sabitzer, other than the playing qualities, that he's captain Leipzig many times, thus adding in another leader in the dressing room. Yes, look, Shawnick, I think that's one thing I would say about Sabitzer, and I think you're absolutely spot on is he is um, that he is um, a character who is 28, he'll be 29, I think, in March. Um, very important player, very experienced player in the Bundesliga and for Austria. He's not going to come in and be... In many ways, I think his age profile and experience is perfect for what we need as well. You know, if, if you're bringing somebody in on loan, like a lot of people like... I mean, look, to be honest with you, I'll be blunt here. Would I rather have Sabitza until the summer or Gravenberg until the summer? And I'd rather have Sabitza. And the reason for that is long term, Gravenberg's the better player. Short term, to get us to the summer and continue this run, Sabitza's experience is invaluable. We might only need Sabitza for six months and then he might go back. So it's a bit like when we got Henrik Larsson for that two or three months. Do you want a young striker for two or three months or do you want an experienced striker for two or three months? And, and, and Sabitzer's experience and leadership is going to be really important for us over the next few months because he won't come into that dressing room and be intimidated by the likes of Casemiro and Marcus Rashford and Bruno. He'll have played against them. Uh, he'll have played at the highest level as well. He's been at Bayern Munich, which is a huge club. I think, he, I, think, I think that's an added bonus as well. We spend so much time talking about the abilities of these players when their personalities are a huge part of it as well. And he brings, um, you know, he brings, a, he, he brings a respect. You know, I'm coming over, I'm coming over from Bayern Munich, you know. Um, I'm a multiple Champions League player. Um, and, you know, I've played at, played at the highest level for, for quite a few years. So I think he comes in and, and, and automatically, you know, it's another Casemiro, it's another Varane, it's another... David De Gea, it's another Martinez, it's another, you know, Marcus Rashford, it's another Bruno, it's another player who knows, they've played the game, he's played the game, he, you know, he knows what he's doing and, and, and that's in addition to the talent that he has. So, look, I don't want to force it because in three months' time it might be a complete waste of time. But that's always the risk you're going to get on the transfer deadline day. But I don't think you could do much better, really, There's the, you know, for what we've done. Kitkas FC finally off their break if they make two signings today. Hope it does not make a return in the summer along with driving in the dark, says Mohammed. This kind of stuff makes me regret slating the owner slightly, says Freedom. I, I don't know, mate. Is that an, is that a United burner account trying to get sympathy for the for the for the board? I mean, look, I'm not going to be negative because I'm very happy about Sabitza, but come on, it's the same old crap from United. Let's be honest. I said it at lunchtime, it was a disgrace, and I still think it's a disgrace. I think leaving it until the last few hours of a 31-day transfer window is a joke. It's desperate. I thought Anthony and Casemiro was desperate. 
And, it, you know, they were the right signings, but they were at the wrong time. We lost to Brentford and Brighton. We never would have lost those games with Casemiro, you know. And we paid £30 million more than we should have done for Anthony. So, look, this doesn't make the Glazers, Richard Arnold, John Murta, good at their job. They're still bad at their job because of how long they've taken to do the deals. I'm just glad they did do them. Um, that's the positive. How long it takes us to do it is ridiculous. And, and what they've actually proved is that they can do it. They just don't do it because they can do these deals very, very quickly. Casemiro in the summer came out of nowhere. Anthony, we got it done in the end. Sabitza comes out of nowhere. There might be somebody else coming out of nowhere. So it shows you that we, we, we have the ability to get these deals done. We're just bloody slow at doing it. Uh, not Ericsson level of passing, but better ball carrier, says Rahul. I, I don't really want to compare Ericsson to Sabitza. I, I find this really boring. Like, I find it really boring when people... Oh, Martial's better than Rashford. No, Rashford's better than Martial. Look, they're both United players. Ericsson is injured. They, they're they not competing for the same place. He's coming in as his own player. What All I'm saying is, I think Sabitza brings more defensive capabilities than Ericsson in the number eight. Um, and brings different qualities in the attacking sense. I think he can carry the ball better. Um, I think he's got a better long range passing. He's certainly got a better long shot, but they're not they're not the same, but they are the same. They're not the same, but they're not the same. They are the same. The, they are the same, that they can play the same role, but they're not the same in the way they do it. But as Ten Hag said in his press conference, to be able to pull these deals off, uh, uh, you know, and replace somebody, sometimes it's very, very difficult. United's boy, board is like Eskom. They're broken. Act when things are broken and as fans are always left in the dark, says Grant. The Glazers are a joke, always leaving it to the last day so the fans can say at least we've got something instead of nothing, says Seymour. Extremely happy with Sabitzer. Probably the best option we could have got on deadline day and seems like a Ten Hag signing. Hopefully he can get a jal in well, says Joshua. Yeah, and I think that whatever you think about this transfer window and how it's been conducted and whether it's enough, I don't think there's any doubt that Veghorst is a Ten Hag type signing and Sabitzer is a Ten Hag type signing. You know, Ten Hag does want a big target man striker who who works hard up front and he has that in Veghorst. And Ten Hag does want midfielders who can press and pass, be creative and work hard. And Sabitzer does that. So look, whether they're both going to be a success or not, they certainly are options that he needs. The final hours of the transfer business with these Prats can't wait for a new dawn, says Corey Lineker. Well, we are going to be back live at eight o'clock again. Uh, for the 8 o'clock show where we're going to talk about the wider picture uh, with the transfer window because there, there are other stories going on at the moment around uh, Kamada, um, uh, Awar, um, there's a couple of other players as well. There are some rumours that United might do another deal. So it could be it could be an interesting next few hours for Manchester United. But Sabitzer, we've had the here we go from Fabrizio. It's a big deal for Manchester United. It's a good deal for the fans. And as I said, I would, uh, you know, ranking this out of 10, for me, this is a solid eight. Um, and I'm not going to give the board any credit. I'm going to give Ten Hag credit and I'm going to give Sabitza credit. But, but I actually do think I would have been very surprised this morning if somebody had said, we're going to get a midfielder in and you're going to give it eight out of 10. I'd have said, you're talking out your ass. Because for me, eight out of 10, somebody like a De Jong. You know, I, I really do think it's a... I, I'm not saying he's better than De Jong, but for where we are, I think it's a really good signing. Um, and he's got a great CV. And, you know, I always like it when you buy a player that we've spoken about in the past as I'd like them to come to United. And look, maybe it's two or three years after I would have liked it to happen. But And there's the possibility that if he does well and he enjoys it, he might want to stay and we might want him to stay. So, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good signing. What do you think about the appointment of Ten Hag? I think he will do big things for the club. We all, we'll have to wait and see. Well, Jake, I, I said, I've said it a few times in the last few days. When it comes to Ten Hag, I think if you give him the tools, he will deliver. And that's why I'm quite happy with the Sabitza deal because I'm like, well, I can see that that's a Ten Hag type signing. Um, if they'd given him someone like Danny Drinkwater, you're like, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want that. That's just something. You know, Deli Ali, that's just something. Bring Jesse Lingard back. That's just something. I think with Sabitza, you see a player that fits. He's a Ten Hag player. You know, if Ten Hag was still at Ajax and they bought Sabitza, you'd go, yeah, he's, he's a Ten Hag player. It's like when Pep brings a player in, you go, that's a Pep player. That's a Klopp player. Sabitza is a Ten Hag player. And, 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 and that's exciting as well. I agree they're both quality, exactly what we need, says Rahi. 
And uh, what do you think about the... I've done that one as well from Jake. Uh, make sure you smash a like on the video, by the way. This is an announcement video for Sabitza. So let's see if we can get 5,000 likes. There's enough people watching. Um, sensible signing. I was thinking we'd get some garbage like Coutinho or James Rodriguez. Exactly. Exactly. Um, do you think Gravenberg will come in next, says Hazes? Well, I can tell you with Gravenberg, we won't be getting Gravenberg. Man United did approach uh, Bayern Munich about Gravenberg, and it was a big no, which may have led us to Sabitzer. Um, and also with Tillemans, um, you can't do a loan deal for Tillemans because we've already done our two British loan deals. We can only loan from Europe at the moment. And um, Leicester wanted money, which we don't have. So Tillemans was a no-go as well. But here's, here's one for you. You can clip this up. Leicester would have wanted probably 15, 20 million for Tillemans. We've got Sabitzer on a loan. Tillemans might not be a long-term solution for United. So I actually think that Sabitza on loan is better than spending money on Tillemans. I think Sabitza suits United better than Tillemans and it also gives us the option to go for something big, bigger and better in the summer if we want to. Whereas if you go for Tillemans, you've got him for the next three or four years. So look, I wouldn't have minded Tillemans and he looked like a really good option even though we never had the money for it. But actually, Sabitza is a better deal than Tillemans in my opinion. And we haven't had to spend any money on it. So, you know... Um, did you see Sabitz's his injury history? Don't look. I looked at it, Nelly. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. His injury risk, his injury history is not too bad. There's quite a bit on there, but there's nothing consistent. They're quite varied injuries, and he's not out for that long. So, I don't think his his injury record's nothing bad. Um, and and his last injury was May last year. So, I think he's had a couple of uh, calf problems or ankles, a couple of shoulder injuries, but nothing nothing particularly long term. So. Um, I think it'd be absolutely fine, to be honest with you. Um, Sabitza also covers many positions. Not bad for a panic loan. And I like that Abadou as well, because I think that if we get Ericsson back and he comes back into the team, you could definitely rest Bruno and play Sabitza as a 10. It's a shame. It's a shame. Obviously, it's a massive shame that Ericsson's injured, but Sabitza would have been brilliant to bring in. And I, you know what? The interesting question that we'll never get an answer to do you think we would have got Sabitzer today if Ericsson wasn't injured? And I, I think we all know the answer to that is no. But if we had, he'd have been brilliant because he can play the Ericsson role and he can play the Bruno role. So he would have been brilliant for us. Unfortunately, Ericsson's injured. He's still brilliant for us, but he can play. Or you could put Ericsson as a 10 as well, jab on as well. So yeah, look, he, he you know it could have worked in a lot of ways, but... Um, Look, I'm excited to see him play. I don't know whether he'll start against Palace. I think we're going to see Casemiro and Fred while he adjusts. But, um, you know, he, 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 unfortunately, this is why we should get these deals done sooner. Because if we got him in the middle of January, you could have played him against Reading. You could have played him against Forest tomorrow. Unfortunately, Sabitza is going to have to be fed into the team in big games like Crystal Palace, Leeds, Barcelona. We don't really have any easy games now on paper to sort of feed him in so he's going to have to hit the ground running isn't he um but look it is done it's here we go from Fabrizio it's not official from the club yet but we'd known for the last couple of hours that personal terms were done we'd known for the last couple of hours that terms had been agreed with Bayern we've had the here we go it's just a very condensed transfer because when we do these in the summer normally you react to terms agreed with the player then you react to terms agreed with the club then you react to, here we go, and then you get the official. We're going to get everything condensed in a few hours today. Uh, he's only landing in Manchester in about 20 minutes, so um, medical will be later on. Uh, Michelle says, how long is Ten Hag's contract with United and would it be too early to give him an extension? Probably a little bit too early, but I think he, I think his contract's you know absolutely fine anyway. Um, we've got three and a half hours left of this window. I think it closes at 11pm tonight. Matthew, welcome to the Members Club and thank you very much for that. Um, I hope there'll be another one. Here we go, says Snaps. Well, look, I'm going to go and have a little bit of bite to eat. I'm just reacting to the Sabitza thing, but I'm back live at 8 o'clock for the 8 o'clock show. And at that point, we can start to talk about whether we're going to do another deal because there are some strong rumours of another deal. I've got quite a few messages to go through on my phone. There's a lot of social media to look at, but there are a couple of players that we've been linked to, Kamada and Awar. Um, We'll be talking about them on the 8 o'clock show. But welcome to Manchester United Sabitza. I'm very happy with this deal. Make sure you smash a like on the video. Subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. And then tune back in at 8 o'clock where we talk about what could be done in and out for Man United in the final few hours. Speak to you in a bit.